Well, hey, would you look at this? It's that game. <laughs> yeah, Frosty just sent me this uh, over Discord, and I was like, well, you know, I might as well just go ahead and cast this. Because um, I'm really curious how this game play, uh, how this map plays out, Dune Ocean. I don't think we saw anyone else play it, really. Except for maybe in the uh, group stage, but I can't really remember. So yeah, we're going to do that now. This is, of course, from that semi-final that was played between Kalishma and Frosty Teeth. Not quarter, semi. <laughs> uh, that's... Yeah, I'm casting lower bracket, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I should turn off reveal all here so you can see like the dimensions of the map. So all this stuff over there is like, what the? Look at that visual effect. Do you see that? Whatever. All this stuff over here is not part of the playable area of the map. You may recognize it actually. Um, first off, maybe you know from the campaign, this is one of the maps in there. But it's also one of the two v two maps. Do you recognize that dune right there? It's like one of the player spawns right here. Then the other one spawns like way over there. I can't really get the camera over there. The 1v1 map takes place over on the corner here. So there's this big dune right through the middle, right? Um, and I really like that actually. I, I feel like uh, I like that idea of the 2v2 map. It's just it's a 2v2 map, so you don't do 1v1s on it. At least you shouldn't. We have before, but it's generally not very good. Resources are different, and the map's just way too big in general. And this map also very big, mind you, but it's quite narrow, right? I mean, it's only like, you know, it's only like this big, so a little trickier to sneak stuff past your opponent. Kind of think of it like tight end passage that way. Frosty going sport cruiser first, that makes sense on a map like this. Kalashmau getting a second production cruiser very early. I believe he went for the RU salvagers first, so it shouldn't be some- yeah, and these two as well. So it shouldn't be some kind of crazy rush, but... This is gonna be a rush of some kind. You should recognize the music as being the same as the main menu. Um, which is kind of funny. Of course, every map has, like, its music if it's one of the campaign maps. Uh, when it's 1v1, like... Sorry, what am I trying to say? When it's one of the, uh, the multiplayer maps, like, the music is just random, right? It just picks one. But um, if you play like Kartobo, no, because Kartobo 1v1 comes from one of the multiplayer maps. It's probably just this one that we have in the in the pool. Actually has a set track, so you always hear this one when you play on it. There's one map, uh, the Shallows for 2v2, that actually plays two tracks at the same time. It's so funny. It's not a bug, it's a feature. Base runner getting pretty aggressive here. Um, artifacts are kind of interesting in this map. They all come there, and then, like, you need to get them close to your opponent's third, which is kind of cool. Um, I feel like it means there's not much ability to extract unless you're being aggressive, which I generally tend to prefer. Because otherwise you kind of encourage people to turtle a little bit. Like, in this case, you have to actually push through your opponent's third practically in order to get to your extraction zone, so... Not really going to incentivize people to play back, right? Which I like. So, two production cruisers are out for Kalishvan, he's getting a salt ship fabrication. That looks pretty spicy, and we have AAVs ready for Frosty Teeth. Now, the AAV should actually beat the salt ships in a one-on-one -on -one fight when there are no upgrades in the mod, but... Uh, I doubt it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one fight, I doubt there's going to be no upgrades. So this could be this could be problems for Frosty Teeth if he doesn't respond properly, and he has not seen those production cruisers yet. He would have if he was headed towards extraction zone, but... Doesn't look like he is. It's AV Armor 1 coming out now. Which is going to be quite fortunate for Frosty. He doesn't. He probably knows why now. Like he has his LAV here, so. It's probably expecting some kind of an attack. Oh, but you see this, you gotta back up, yeah? Oh, man. I, he probably will, but I mean, like, he's kind of let this slip past this AAV here. Oh, yeah, so he's coming back now. You probably want to fight this early, but I don't know, it's tricky. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of uh, assault chips there. Yeah, really good fabrication coming out, that is definitely proper. He's just making a beeline for the main, I guess? Um, if I were him, I would just attack right there, because, like, uh, you're so much closer, like you're giving your opponent a lot of time if you try to go back to the main. 
right? Whereas, you know, the carrier's here, yeah, but the assault ships are still going to really wreck up this eco right here. And then you can head down to the main after you've killed it already. Um, I feel like that is probably better chances for you. Extraction goes out for Couch Mal. It's going to come out for Frosty Thief too, but not for a while. It's pretty slow to begin moving there. Armored Unit Defenses 1 are done. So it's kind of a toss-up now as to whether the AAV or the Assault Ship wins, and there's so many more of them. So they're definitely going to take that one. Carrier starts moving back. That's definitely what Frosty needs to do. Yeah, and I suspect a support cruiser will go down here if he just continues to chase it. He's definitely got the speed. That's got to be a dead unit there. Well, smoke does come down. If he just keeps moving forward, like, I don't know if he's giving them a move command. That's what he really should do. Maybe send, like, one of them back to just kill these rails, because they're very exposed. Um, but yeah, that support cruiser is going to go down. Looks like the production cruisers are falling back off the back of it, and the one's on the way. Yeah, this is going to be really tough for Frosty. Uh, it's tons of damage being done, though, to that eco. And yeah, if you can kill off these salvagers, you know, why not? For some reason, I was thinking you shouldn't because they weren't mining, but like, I don't know why I was thinking that. I mean, obviously, they're going to be mining in just like a second. Looks like they are actually getting retired, which may be wise because you imagine, you know, they were going to get killed anyway, but look how fast these soul chips died. Like, maybe you shouldn't have done that. I don't know. Railgun fabrication on the way now for Cow Schmel. Um, you normally go interceptors off the back of this, but I feel like that's completely valid too. You've done so much damage, you can kind of get away with anything, really, but. Engage and destroy, base runner. Easy, right? You know, I, no, I'm, I'm sure he couldn't, but he could do a lot of damage to the turret here. That'd be funny. Oh, hello, Mr. Bicycle Man. I don't know if you could hear that on the in the video there, but someone drove by quite quickly. It's a dead runner. <laughs> it's like that scene from Interstellar. No, from Reception, right? You know what he said to me when Frosty died? He turned to me and he said, Robert, there's really nothing to be said. Anyway. <laughs> uh. I'm sure I'm quoting that wrong too, but you know what I mean. Frosty kind of going for a bit of a counter push here. I think this is why we normally get interceptors when we're a Galaxian player in this scenario, yeah. Because then, you know, oh, whoa, I'm yawning. If your opponent goes for like a counter attack like this, uh, they're really exposed against air. Generally, it's a little bit better for them if they're back in their base. Although, looking here, there's nothing that's going to defend against it back home either, but, you know. not really going to do anything this attack of, um, of sand scarens. When coalition carriers have the heal beams on, like when they have the power distributed like this, you know, you really need a, a, a non-nothing force, can I say that? You probably know what I mean. Like, you, you need a pretty substantial force to actually do any damage to them. Like this. I'm just looking at the second base here. The topography is a little weird for this, uh, for the red player, isn't it? It's kind of like, 
He's kind of uphill if he wants to defend that thing, isn't he? And yeah, same for the third, obviously. I, I, the third is the same, yeah, for like the green player, but... Well, maybe this is high ground too, but I don't know, I guess I'd have to see it. I should probably be watching the fight taking place, shouldn't I? In fact, Frosty is doing really well here. Uh, not well enough, I don't think, but he nearly killed off that production cruiser there. I don't know what's going on over here. Yeah, this is a fight that the uh, AAV clearly wins with that. Uh, I wouldn't smoke him. That's okay, though. No, yeah, this is definitely a fight that the AAV wins with that um, support cruiser healing on the probe. What are the upgrades like for Khaled? Yeah, he did get armored unit, too. It's interesting, because he doesn't have that many of them on the field. I feel like he just got that, but maybe it was actually like a really long time ago, and I'm just a pleb. No, that's definitely possible. Lucas, my man! He's still out there. He's still killing it. He's gonna be a lieutenant someday, man. You see, he's already learned how to... Yeah, there you go. Now he's Lieutenant Lucas. You better give him some respect. He's learned how to make his shots make zero sound. That's always, you know... It's really impressive when people know how to do that. Artillery tech finished for Frosty now. That seems like a bit of an ambitious choice. I don't know if he's gonna be able to, you know, get that with his opponent. Mining on two bases instead of three. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, by the way. I, I hope I don't ever make people feel bad when I'm casting them, but I just, like, I have I have to comment when I see it. Uh, <laughs> Lucas, though, he's really, he's doing a thing. A whole bunch of sand skimmers gonna chase down that poor man, but, but we got Lieutenant Lucas in the hood. I mean, this is not gonna go well. Yeah, they know it. They know it. They fear Lucas. They're getting out of there. The veterancy bonuses always seem really good, but like, you 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 take those numbers and like realize what they actually amount to in the game, and it's like, meh. You know, like they don't really do much. Uh, <laughs> And, I mean, the other thing is that it's true, if, if your entire army had veterancy like this, it would make a bigger difference. Like, I guess with cruisers it matters more too, right? But, like, they really just don't make too much of an impact, you know? I, I think veterancy is kind of one of those things that games have just sort of to have it. Um, but we don't ever really want it to influence the game, because it sort of, like, supports, uh, like, steamrolls, you know what I mean? No, Lucas, look, you're, you're, you're a baller, but you can't take this kind of a fight. Oh, but he knows, he knows. This is why they made him a lieutenant, you know, he's splitting up the attack. He knows what he's doing. He'll give it a valiant effort, but even his own team is firing missiles at him now. That's the death of Lucas Sobon right there. But right, right before his freakish death, he was promoted to a lieutenant commander. So, I mean, he, he, you know, he made it places in the world. Even if he didn't, you know, survive, he made it places. I gotta say, this game has stagnated a lot more than I thought it would have. Um, I really feel Cal could have just kind of finished it off, but I suppose it's kind of a, th a theme that we've seen in the lower brackets so far that people don't seem to feel comfortable finishing the game without their carriers. So they get their power reserves up and then they come out, and they don't really finish the game off until then. By the way, movement on the carrier is kind of interesting, isn't it? Because I think the convention on most maps is that it should be um, your carrier can move on the dark spots but not on the light ones, but this map doesn't really seem to follow that at all, so it's a little tr tricky to figure out where he can go. Because the campaign just often didn't do that. It's more like a, it's the multiplayer map convention. And I'm telling you, if we could make our own custom maps for this game, like how cool would that be? Because I, I have some ideas, you know. I want to try them out. But. By the way, Sand Skimmer's landing at the perfect time right here. I I'm wondering if they're going to stick around and kill off this uh, artillery cruiser. Because once they see that pop, like, that's a really good unit. Uh, he left just before it came out. He couldn't have known that, you know, but... I guess he knows now. Yeah, he knows now because it fired a missile at him, right? You should just, like, charge in there and kill that thing. Because that's a really expensive unit, and that's, like, a perfect opportunity to kill it. I love artillery in this game, by the way. It's so cool looking. Okay. 
One interesting idea that I've had uh, recently is like if you made an RTS that actually used like physics to determine whether whether things hit or not. I mean, I guess that's kind of just like Homeworld One already, isn't it? Whereas Homeworld Two switched more to the RNG system and decided whether things were gonna hit or not. But I'm thinking, like, what if you just told it, like, uh, use the range equation to figure out how far to fire the projectile? You should get two answers: one that's like really high and one that's lower. Just like pick the the lower one, right? And then just like let it fly, you know. And then once it hits, say, do the explosion there and figure out if you did the damage or not. Whereas right now, I believe what he's doing is uh, just picking a spot to shoot at and then saying, okay, the missile will hit there, and then we play our animation, which should take a certain amount of time, and then we hit. And then we decide whether we hit based on whether or not, you know, someone was actually there. But my thought is, like, this would make artillery really interesting, because you had to, like, you'd have to um, balance, you know, getting close, so that you could have, like, the closer to direct fire shot, but then not getting too close, because then you'd have to shoot almost, like, straight up in order to hit people. I don't know, maybe, maybe it wouldn't really be as cool as it seemed in my head, but, like, somehow that just really appeals to me because, oh, he's gonna win on extraction. <laughs> How did this happen? I, I wasn't even paying attention at all to that. <laughs> oh well, it looks like we didn't miss too much really in that game one, but uh, hey, it was on Dune Oceans, that's pretty cool. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you enjoyed my ramblings too about just random things, but <laughs> uh, yeah, that's probably the last one I'm casting today, but I'll, I'll catch you tomorrow probably with the finals. Till then.